Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're in Studio One version 6, we're going to talk flipping your faders. Flipping faders is something that comes from both studio work and live work. When you're working on a big analog console, or these days on a digital console, your aux sends are typically encoders or potentiometers on a big console or a digital console. But sometimes you need to very quickly get your hand on a bunch of different things instead of trying to go in and just adjust minutely. So they started creating sends on faders. This is aux sends from either your digital live console or your large format analog console. You can take any one of your auxes and assign it to the faders, and then that becomes how you increase or decrease the send from that aux. In Studio One version 6, we now have that ability inside the DAW, so let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so here we are inside of this session. It's a country song that I just started working on, and you'll probably see some more from this one very soon. But what we're looking at are our vocals. All in red here are my lead vocals, including its folder track and bus, and these orangish looking ones, these are my background vocals. And you can see for this example, I just put copies of a bunch of different sends across all of them. And ignore the sidechain compression coming from the lead vocal, this is for these effects. And the effects in question are to the right of my session over here. I have a quarter note delay, I have a dotted eighth note delay, I have a plate reverb and a room reverb. So for this example, on all of my vocal tracks, including backgrounds and doubles and everything, I've put the sends on all of them. Like I said, these are side chains on my bus, so we're going to ignore those right now. But on all of my vocals, which are these four here, and my background vocals, you can see they all have quarter note, plate, room, and dotted eighth notes. So you probably already know when you make a send to an effects channel or to a bus, by default, it already gives you some level at minus six and it's engaged. So immediately you're going to start sending to your destination. But if I need to adjust my quarter notes on all of these tracks or my plates, Yes, I can go in and I can adjust one and I use the mouse and find this little slider and take care of it this way. But that doesn't really work for me. And you saw I have these three tracks selected. So all of my sends that I'm adjusting here are all kind of working the same. But I want finer detail and I want to be able to see this a little bit better. Now, I could double click on here. This is a new feature inside Studio One where I'll get in increased view of the send in question. And because we're still working in our background vocals and I have this temporary group because they're all selected, if I adjust this one, even though you can't see it, the rest will adjust as well. If I crank it all the way and then click away, there, they're all full blast to the plate. But let's undo that. And instead of doing it the way we just did, let's turn on flip faders. So when you have your mixer window open, if you come to the left, you're going to look for this button right here. It looks like two little faders and it says activate fader flip when you click on it. So when you turn it on, you're going to see that all of your faders minus as actual destination are going to turn into some shade of green. If it's active, it's going to be a brighter shade. And if it's inactive, it's going to be all the way down on bottom and just kind of dull. Uh, it's because we don't actually have a send on this channel. So these are the current levels of the quarter note sends on all of my vocals. And you can tell that it's the quarter note because there's now this green box around my quarter notes, right? Maybe we don't want to adjust our quarter notes. We want to adjust our room sends. So what you can do is you can come over here to the little drop down arrow and I can say, you know what? I want my room. So now all of these faders and they didn't move because these are all just like the standard positioning when you add a new send. But all of my rooms are now on these faders down here. So I have finer control. If I don't want my lo-fi vocals going to the room, I can just grab the faders and drop them down. Vocal ends, you know what? This is the end of the song. I do want a little bit more. And my harmonies, again, I'll make a temporary group by holding down shift, clicking on the first one, and then clicking on the last one. And we're just gonna bring these down a little bit. But now all of my send levels from up here are down here on bottom. All right, now that we're in here and we're active in the fader flip mode, 
yeah, I can come back to the dropdown again and pick whatever send I want, but that's a little slow for me. And you guys know I love my keyboard shortcuts. So if we go into the keyboard shortcuts and type in fader, you can now see next fader flip target or previous fader flip target. I went ahead and assigned some keyboard shortcuts and I'm going to use them right now. So I just have it as control alt and the number pads four and six because there's actually arrows on the number pad. So I can know left or right or previous or next. So we're still on our room. I'm gonna hold down my key controls, which is control alt. And now I'm gonna hit the number six, which is gonna bring me to my next send assignment. And now you can see everything is adjusted. I'm working on my dotted eighth notes. All of my faders on bottom have adjusted to their levels. If I wanna go back, control alt, the number four, let's go back to the original quarter note. And I just hit four a couple times to scroll back to previous sends. Okay, as I was filming this, I actually just discovered something else, which is really cool. So with Studio One version six, panning on the sends can now be linked to the channel itself. So if you have a vocal or a guitar or whatever your source is panned all the way to the right, by default, your sends are gonna follow that as well. But to change that, when you go into sends on the down arrow, you can unlock panning. It's just doing it on this one channel right now, and that's fine. But now what I can do, because we're in fader flip mode, I can grab the panner here, and if my vocal is heavy on the left, maybe I want the reverb to go to the right to give some separation and some extra width. So moving this to the right here, and then turning off flip faders, my main vocal is still up the center, but my pan for my quarter note delay is now only going to the right. When we activate fader flip again, we can see that that's still true, and all of our keyboard shortcuts still follow suit, so I can hold down control, click on the panner, and it locks right back to center. For now though, I'm gonna put things back to the way they were, use the down arrow, lock pan to channel. This is also gonna be really handy because coming from the live sound, when I would mix monitors for bands, which is the bands mix, not the mix for the audience, I would use flip faders all the time. Somebody needs something, let me go right to their channel, see everything that they have, and ad adjust from there. And then somebody else gives me another cue that they need something lower, flip to them, adjust everything as needed. So if you guys are using Studio One in your recording studio and you have cue mixes set up, this makes things really easy to adjust on your faders and not just these tiny little sliders that are in the send themselves. You can use your full size faders down on bottom to adjust mixes for your different members who are in your studio at that time. Now, I will say there is one negative that I found as of the recording of this video, and that is that my fader port does not reflect when I flip to faders on the DAW. I think in a future release, they may incorporate this. I actually really hope they do. I'm gonna head over to the forums and put it in there as a feature request. So maybe they can work on this for both the fader port 8, 16, the single, the IO station 24, as well as the studio live consoles. Now the studio live consoles, because I don't have one here, I cannot confirm this, but at least for my fader port 8, I am unable to reflect flip faders on this device right now and I accidentally hit the keyboard, it's fine. If you guys do know how to do that, and maybe I'm missing something, please let me know down in the comments because I think that this is a great feature to have if you have a fader port or a studio live mixer or some kind of physical surface where you can reflect your fader flipped right in front of you. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. To join the community or to ask about mixing or lesson information, join the Discord. There's gonna be a link down in the description. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.